It's just not fun. It's just not fun, is it? Watching the Detroit Pistons this season is not enjoyable. Like, look me in the eyes. Yeah, look me in the eyes and tell me you've actually enjoyed watching a Pistons game this year. And if you say yes, well, then I question some things about you. But yeah, okay, it has not been enjoyable watching the Pistons. It's kind of that simple. And it's not because they're losing. We dealt with that last season. Deal with that every single season. You can find silver linings in the losing seasons, and the silver lining will be another top pick coming our way, which is nice. That's nice, for sure. And Cade Cunningham will be good. We're not here to talk. I'll just get that out of the way. I'll make sure that you guys know I'm not here to overreact and say Cade is a bust or any of those things. No. Okay, if, if you've watched any of my channel, you know I'm not going to do that. Okay, let's let's not be silly here. That doesn't mean it still can't be boring, and watching the Pistons so far has been boring, which is just a shame because... All the good like energy, all the good things they had built up over last season, and it seems like it's just diminished. It goes from a team that had all rookie Sadiq Bay, Isaiah Stewart, most improved finalist Jeremy Grant. You obviously had the number one pick, needless to say, and that came after. But even before then, I think Pistons fans as a whole were pretty positive. Pretty sure as a whole, even if they had got a number four, number three overall pick, it was still going to be pretty exciting times because of those all rookie selections, because Troy Weaver came in and turned a mess into not a mess into a more exciting and promising team. Even Killian Hayes had a good last few games and it looked like he was maybe turning a corner. And again, I'm not here to turn on him in his first 35 games of his career or however, however long it's been. But it's, it's just not enjoyable watching the Pistons right now. They have the worst offensive rating recorded. It's only been seven games, so it could probably change. It probably will change because their fixtures haven't been easy. We have to talk about that. Their fixtures have not been easy, but they have the worst offensive rating Recorded since the 2015-76s. <laughs> it's the worst offensive rating since the 2015-76s. Sure, Dwayne Casey definitely deserves some blame. He hasn't been the best. At the same time, I do believe that there just have been some players that should be performing better than they have. We're shooting 28% from three. And yes, this team isn't filled out with sharpshooters. There are actually no real sharpshooters on the team. Maybe Cade going forward. I don't think Sadiq Bey, when I think of a sharpshooter, I'm talking about the JJ Reddicks, the Duncan Robinsons, the Seth Currys of the world. Wayne Ellington, uh, uh, okay, maybe in that mix. You get the point. Guys who will come off screens relentlessly, just come around corners, and just that's all they're doing, right? All they're doing is shooting. That is their job. So I don't think we have any of those guys, but we should still be shooting better because I mentioned Sadiq Bey. I mentioned Cade Cunningham. Who, again, it's been his first two games. We're not going to be harsh on him. <laughs> There's no one shooting good. There's literally no one shooting good. I'll, I'll talk you through the numbers in a bit. Um, but <laughs> what do I have to say? Let's start with Cade Cardigan, okay? It's hard to even start somewhere because <laughs> I, I mentioned it. But I normally make positive videos. If you've watched the channel, I make positive videos. It really doesn't matter what it is. I'll make positives out of... Seiku Dumboya, who is gone now, so we don't have to hype him up anymore. <laughs> Shout out to Seiku. I hope you find a team. I guess he's in the Lakers G League, but we're not here to talk about Seiku, okay? But I'll make positive videos out of most things, particularly Pistons related, because I don't see much point in just bringing negativity to the team. But is there much positives? We'll talk about Cade. He's a positive, obviously. He's going to be better. People are already clowning him because of his first two games. LaMelo Ball scored zero points in his first game, and there were a lot of people clowning him. I remember. I do remember that. There were people clowning him, and we see what he's doing right now. He's playing like a star right now. There are countless examples. Trey Young, I'm, there are countless examples. There are examples of players, point guards, Steve Nash, Jason Kidd, years into their career before they were actually good. Do I think Cade is going to be the same? No, because he's physically more mature. He's just a bigger body, and I already saw in Summer League what we want to see. We saw that he can be that guy, and he will be that guy. It's just it's a matter of time. It's not like he's looked terrible on the court. He's still breaking down defenses on occasion. He's still making the right passes on occasion. He's just, he's just finding his way, okay? It's been two games. Let's not get carried away. Jalen Green, an example from this draft class, just had a good game against the Lakers, but prior to that game, he'd had about six games, and only one of them had been good. The rest had been, like, bad. And this isn't me comparing the two. I honestly don't care. I honestly do not care between the two, okay? At this point in time, it's been seven games. How do I care to compare the two? I don't. But it only been six games into his career, and five of them had been <laughs> bad, but one of them had been good, and that kind of overshadows everything. That's all people need to see. One in every three or four games, if a rookie puts up 20 points, which Cade can do on any given night, I believe that, or 20 points, eight assists, something of that nature, like Josh Giddy has done, like Scotty Barnes have done, like these guys have done, and like Cade will do, because remember, he was the best player in college, and these other guys, 
that dominated college, well, not even dominated, like were really good in college, like Scotty Barnes, Franz Wagner, are doing really well. So I still believe Cade will be fine. But yeah, all he needs is a couple of games to overshadow it and a couple of games to stop the talk about him being Markel Fultz 2.0, which I did see. I did see that. <laughs> what, what do I say to that? What, what do we say to that? Oh, Markel Fultz 2.0? Just, just stop. Just stop. But moving away from Cade, conclusion, if you want my conclusion, Cade will be good. I'll put my hand out. I'll bet on anyone who doesn't believe he'll be a good player or be good in his rookie season. I'll go a step further and I'll say between the next 10 games, <laughs> over the next 10 games, he will have a game where he puts up 20 points. I guarantee that. Okay. So there you go. Shake my hands on that and hold me to it. But he'll be fine. He's had a rough start. I don't honestly care. I don't care. Although it kind of does matter because when I'm talking about a team being boring, the number one pick struggling does kind of contribute to it. But even without Cade, this team should be able to have something more redeemable because right now there's literally nothing redeemable. Jeremy Grant goes from, oh, it's exciting that Jeremy Grant's making that leap to all of a sudden it's like, Jeremy Grant, you're not that guy. Stop taking those shots. It's kind of harsh because there haven't really been anyone else stepping up to the plate. Like, who would you rather take the shots? Corey Joseph? No. No, but it all just kind of attributes to the Pistons going from there's some exciting players or Sadiq Bey and Isaiah stood in their rookie season. So you kind of give them a pass for everything heading into their second seasons. And all of a sudden, there's a few growing pains there and they've struggled. Sadiq Bey looked like maybe he was going to be the bright spot to start the season and he was. And then all of a sudden, he's in a slump now and he's one of the guys shooting really bad from three. And in general, that's why the offense is absolutely terrible, which is why I kind of tribute everything to Dwayne Casey. Yes, sure is the offense stale. Yes, it is pretty stale. Sure, is there a lack of pick and rolls with Cade through two games? It's only been two games, but has there been a lack of pick and rolls? Yes. Killian Hayes has had a few pick and rolls, so I can't say he's been completely thrown out, but he could have a few more pick and rolls. He could have a few more. He could be involved in the offense a bit more. There could be a little bit more fresh and exciting offense going on, which hasn't really happened. It's not like there's been the most amazing offensive players out there without Cade and with Killian still trying to find his rhythm, but it could be better. But the shooting is the reason why they're such a bad offense, because through seven games, well, just look at the guys. Look at the guys who are shooting. Trey Lyles and Killian Hayes. Yes, the sharp shooters themselves are our top two three-point shooters. Trey Lyles, Killian Hayes. Do I need to say anything else? You see the list. And again, I mentioned there's no sharp shooters per se, but Sadiq Bey was came in as a shooter. He came in as a shooter. I think he's more than that, and he's already shown that, and that's good. So once he figures out his shooting, we've got a good player there. I know that for sure, but Jeremy Grant should be shooting decently. That's what he has been able to do for the last several years. You've got someone like a Corey Joseph even should be shooting better. Cade, we're giving him a pass, but Kelly Olynyk was paid to be a shooter. He's done other things, but still, that's what he was paid to do. You can go through the list, and you can see, guys, Frank Jackson was paid because he shot 40% from three last season. So all of these guys are just really really off the mark at the moment. And some of it has come down to the offense being a little bit stale, but at times also they're getting decent shots. Like Frank Jackson had a handful of decent shots just the other night against the Bucks and was bricking them. And I saw other occasions where players were passing up shots because in general, it just seems like they're not confident, which is what happens when you can't hit a shot. So it's kind of all a knock-on effect. And in general, it's all just a mess right now. It's been a tough fixture list. We can't even deny that. Chicago twice, the Hawks, 76ers, Nets, and Bucks. Okay, so again, the results aren't something I'm looking at and going one and six from those fixtures and really like pulling my hair out. No, nothing's really making me pull my hair out, which is, that's the reality because nothing has been close enough or entertaining enough or <laughs> anything on the line for me to do something of that nature. But those have been tough fixtures. The Bucks were also having a starting lineup of Grayson Allen, George Hill, Pat Connaughton and Thanasis. Yes, they had Giannis, of course, but you shouldn't be getting blown out by a team like that. You shouldn't be putting up 89 points against those guys. Let's be honest right now. Let's be honest. You should not be putting up 89 points against those guys. And that's just indicative. Dwayne Casey said that wasn't a good enough performance. That was the worst performance. And that's why this video had to come. Because honestly, the reason I hadn't made a Pistons video is because I was waiting for something positive to happen. I was waiting for Cade to come in. And I was going to be like, Cade's the GOAT, Cade is the savior, Cade is the best rookie, all of these things that were very hyperbolic, which was going to be a joke, but kind of serious in a way, because he is, and he will be soon, but that hasn't happened, and I don't know when that will happen, so I just had to make a video at some point in time, and just talking about the negatives, which are that this team sucks. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
Yeah, it kind of does. I am struggling to find some positives to start the season. Again, I don't think it'll remain this for the entire season. It's not going to be like this. Sadiq Bey will get out of his shooting slump. Hopefully, Isaiah Stewart gets back into some form and continues to be what he was doing towards the end of last season where he was averaging a double-double. I know for a fact, I have full confidence Cade Cunningham will be good over the next 10 games at some point in time. It's going to click for him. I've already seen enough to suggest, like, we know he's a good player. Okay, I don't even need to talk about him. Jeremy Grant... Am I confident in him getting out of his slump because he's been in a little bit of a slump? He had a decent game against the Bucks, but in general, not really because I don't believe he's a number one option. I think he's a good two, maybe three, probably a three. That's what he is at the end of the day. I don't believe he's a non-threat offensively. We've seen that. We've seen him improve, but no, he's not the kind of guy you want taking 15 mid-range shots a game, which he seems to continue to do, which is an issue, but... I think he'll be better than he has been. Frank Jackson, you hope. You hope one of these bench guys steps up because you go from having Habanu Diallo and Frank Jackson and these guys looking like they're going to compete for a place and compete for minutes and potentially be really solid and they were towards the end of last season and now they're doing absolutely nothing to start the season. So that's kind of how it's been. Just in general, Pistons fans, I know there are some people that probably only watch Pistons games. I just implore you, watch some other games. <laughs> For your mental health, watch some other games. You don't have to put yourself through watching the Pistons as the only basketball team. Find a player, find a team. I promise you it's not cheating. I promise you it's not cheating to find another team and just enjoy it. You don't have to support them. No, you don't support them. That's fine. But just enjoy watching some other teams because at the moment, there's not much enjoyment coming out of this team. And it will come hopefully once Cade flips the switch, which he will, and... Maybe someone else flips the switch, which I don't know. They're complaining about the balls as well, which if you've played basketball, you do know that's a big difference. It is a big difference, but it's not something I want to see on my timeline, I'm going to be honest, when the team's shooting 28% from three and absolutely nothing inspiring is coming from this team, and then I see them complaining about the balls. Nah, it's not really what you want to see, but it's what you have to put up with. But just, yeah, like I said, Pistons fans... Find something else to enjoy. The expectations were not crazy high for them winning games. And those games, as I mentioned, you don't expect them to win any of those games. Fine. The way they've done it, the way they've been uninspiring and watching Corey Joseph bench Cade and Killian and watching Rodney Magruder coming in for the last seven or six minutes of the game the other night. I don't know what else to say, man. I don't know what else to say. It's been boring. It's been frustrating. Hopefully, it'll change. Still have a good day, though. Josh Giddy Rookie of the Year. <laughs>